I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you and me. Says I, but Joe, you're ten years dead. I never died, says he. I never died, says he. People are covered with mud. You can't tell if they're wearing clothes or what. What's your name? Jessica. Jessica, did you mean to get this money? No, they threw me in. Yeah! Did you get dragged in the mud? No, I walked in. Hey, folks. So, it's recently come to my attention that a certain internet pseudo-leftist personality who calls himself Thought Slime has decided to target Jyoti Brar, a prominent communist leader, and myself. Um, the reason he's decided to go after us is because he disapproves of something that Jyoti Brar said in an interview I did with her nine months ago. Material analysis is good for a lot of things. It can help you build a bridge or manage an economy. It can't tell you whether a poem is good. I'm not saying you're a bad person or a bad leftist, necessarily. Sure. Before you, you see Nazbol ghoul Caleb Maupin talking to Jody Brar of the Communist Party of Great Britain. And what she's saying sucks. Now, this is not the first time that someone has tried to paint me as a bigot who advocates further oppression of the transgender community. However, I've always given a pretty clear answer when directly asked about the issue. Take a listen to what happened when Vosh tried to gotcha me and paint me as a transphobe in our recent debate about tankies and their role in the left. How do you feel about transgender people, if I might ask? I think the way that they're, they're treated is awful. Bullying, hate crimes, it's despicable. The way people, you know, have been separated from their families, kicked out of their households. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I feel nothing but empathy for people that are transgender and face all the hate and discrimination on that basis. But you agree that gender reassignment surgery is a valid way of... Um of, uh, of addressing their, you know, uh, gender dysphoria in many cases. If an right? adult chooses to do that, that's their business. It has nothing to do with me. Okay, well. Uh, hate I, crimes, discrimination, bullying is something that any progressive would oppose. I, I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. What about China? The thing is, I've always understood the transgender issue to be an issue of human rights. Transgender people are victims of hate crimes very frequently by bigots who somehow feel threatened by their very existence. Transgender people have difficulty finding jobs because of discrimination in employment. Transgender people uh, often face being kicked out of their households because their families reject them and don't accept them. And I have always opposed this. My orientation has always been that this kind of discrimination, this kind of castigation and oppression of one section of the working class hurts all working people and should be opposed by progressive forces. Now, not only have I always taken this position, but I've been quite active around it. Before I was a journalist, when I was an activist, on many occasions I took to the streets of New York City to march for trans rights. In New York City, the NYPD, the police department here, actually had a policy of profiling transgender women and stopping and frisking them and, in some cases, often arresting them unjustly on charges of prostitution. And I was involved in many protests around that issue and around the fact that the New York City Police Department was targeting the transgender community. Furthermore, uh, here you can see me with Mariela Castro, an individual who's been very key in reforming the way the Cuban government treats LGBT people, gay and lesbian, and transgender people. I had the opportunity of being involved in planning a reception for her when she came to New York City. I have always viewed the oppression of transgender people as an issue of human rights. Now, you'll notice that the clip which this thought slime individual objected to was not about whether transgender people should be beaten up and killed, it wasn't about whether they should face discrimination in hiring, it wasn't about whether their families should reject them, it wasn't about any of that. It was about transgender ideology. And honestly, I do not know enough about this topic. I am not well-informed enough about the issue of transgender ideology uh, to make a comment on it. So I let Jyoti Brar, a prominent British communist who I respect deeply, give her opinion. And this thought slime objects to her opinion. The thing is, I don't view the transgender issue as an abstract ideological question. 
I view it as an issue of human rights and an issue of affecting people's lives. And this is starting to point to the real difference between me and this thought slime individual and a lot of people that are out to malign and slander legitimate anti-imperialists, Marxists, and activists. The likes of Mr. Thought Slime try to portray it as if you must be a supporter of imperialism if you are to advocate against the oppression of transgender people. And furthermore, all who defend anti-imperialist and existing socialist states are somehow advocates of harming transgender people. That is a huge, huge misconception. Who was the first prominent transgender activist in U.S. history? It was Leslie Feinberg. Leslie Feinberg was a leader of the Workers' World Party, and Leslie Feinberg was a tanky. She was a defender of Cuba, a defender of North Korea, a defender of the Soviet Union and China. She spoke in defense of the Islamic Republic of Iran. She spoke in defense of many governments around the world, and she viewed the transgender struggle as a struggle that was involved with tearing down U.S. imperialism. Now, I don't know whether what Jyoti Brar said about the ideology being promoted by many transgender activists today is correct or not. I simply don't have the knowledge. I've heard people from both sides of the issue talk, and they, they both say things that are very persuasive. I just don't know enough about it. However, however, even if Jyoti Brar were to be dead wrong about this issue, even if everything she said was completely wrong, that would not take away from the fact that Jyoti Brar is an amazing heroic anti-imperialist activist. And this is at the root of one of the greatest crimes that this internet milieu, this cesspool of pseudo-leftists commit. Jyoti Brar and the Communist Party of Great Britain Marxist-Leninist have been on the forefront of struggling for the rights of working people in the United Kingdom. Furthermore, they have been on the forefront of opposing imperialism. Jyoti has traveled to Palestine to stand with the Palestinian people. Jyoti traveled to Libya to offer support to the people of Libya as they built socialism on the African continent in the face of sanctions and attacks from the United States. The Communist Party of Great Britain Marxist-Leninist and Jyoti Brar beat the drum very loudly that socialism is an alternative to capitalism and that the banks, factories, and industries can be organized to serve public good and not profits. Is it possible that great revolutionary activists who do great, important, amazing work to oppose capitalism and imperialism can also make mistakes? Yes, it is, but not according to Mr. Thought Slime. If you say one thing that he disagrees with, not about human rights, but rather about ideology, you're a Nazbol, that's what he referred to me as, and not only are you wrong, but you deserve to be beaten up. And that's basically what he's arguing here. He would have myself, uh, someone who has been very outspoken in opposing all forms of oppression. He would have Jyoti Brar, a prominent leader of, of communist activists and a woman of color in the United Kingdom, attacked as Red Browns and Nazbols because we apparently aren't on board with him, not about the human rights of transgender people, but about an ideological question of which he has a very specific view. Jyoti Brar, like myself, is a communist. However, this understanding that I have that sometimes people can take very good progressive views on some issues while being problematic and very wrong on others doesn't simply apply to communists. I have been widely attacked because I will defend and uphold the role played by the black minister, Louis Farrakhan. Minister Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam is not a communist. And there are things that he has said about Jewish people and about the LGBT community that I vehemently disagree with. However, I realize that there's a lot more to Minister Louis Farrakhan than these comments. Minister Louis Farrakhan organized the Million Man March, one of the most important civil rights and black community empowerment demonstrations in the entire history of the country. Minister Louis Farrakhan's organization, the Nation of Islam, is in communities, helping people to get off drugs, serving prisoners, serving low-income people, providing services. Minister Louis Farrakhan is anti-imperialist, and he always makes the point of linking the struggle for black freedom in the United States 
with the struggle of people around the world against U.S. imperialism. And I think that despite the problematic things that Minister Louis Farrakhan says and believes, he plays a very dynamic and important role. And let me add that in 2011, when NATO bombs were falling and Libya faced a bombing and an onslaught at the hands of U.S. imperialism, the Trotskyites were cheering for that intervention. Why? Oh, Gaddafi's a dictator, Gaddafi's a Stalinist, Gaddafi's an imperialist. But here is what Minister Louis Farrakhan, not a communist, said. Why do you hate Gaddafi? Does he share the wealth of Libya with the poor? Well, if he does, and he does, doesn't that make you America look bad? America is ruled by special interests, not by the needs, rights, and interests of the American people. And you dare to say that the Arab world that is rising wants your democracy? No. They want liberty. They want justice. They want equity. They want a government that serves the needs, rights, and interests of the people. That's what they want. And this is why Muammar Gaddafi said, this is not Egypt. This is not Tunisia. This is not Bahrain. This is not that because he has looked out for the needs, rights, and interests of the Libyan people. That does not mean to say that there's no dissatisfaction in Libya and whether that dissatisfaction is legitimate or not. Now, even though Thought Slime made the transgender question the focus of his video, I would like to critique his video in other ways because I believe his ideological flaws are more easily revealed when he speaks about other things. For example, this is him explaining how he seems to understand the class struggle. The fact that a small handful of rich ghouls owns most of the money and will all die of starvation and exposure if we don't get some of it, even though we're producing more than we need and throwing away almost half of everything at a time when that overproduction is poised to make our planet uninhabitable, just so that the already unfathomably rich ghouls can have a computer readout that says that their wealth increased by 0.0001%, and the only way that you can get the means of your survival is by throwing yourself into perpetual and worsening exploitation forever? need to worry about making a living and surviving the forthcoming end of the world. While the aforementioned handful of rich ghouls don't. So according to Mr. Thought Slime, the problem with capitalism isn't that in the pursuit of profits, capitalists are organizing the economy irrationally and that even though the levels of productivity are rising, people are getting further and further into poverty, the problem with capitalism is that there's just too many resources being used. There's too many people in the world. Uh, we all have too much stuff. Uh, we're overproducing, as he put it, and, uh, and people are just too comfortable and they're consuming too much. That's not Marxism. That's called Malthusianism. And Malthusianism is an idea that Karl Marx thoroughly refuted. Mr. Thought Slime should read theories of surplus value, and read how Karl Marx completely refuted this ideology that there are limited resources in the world and that we're headed towards some kind of apocalypse unless we can drastically reduce the human population and get rid of useless eaters. The ideology of Malthusianism is an ideology that was used by the British Empire to murder millions of people all over the world, in India, in Africa, in Ireland, and many other places. Marxists and socialists do not believe the problem with capitalism is that it allows people to consume too much and breed too much. That's not what Marxists have ever espoused. Not anywhere in the writings of Karl Marx will you ever find the phrase limited resources or will you ever hear predictions of an ecological disaster unless the human race stops consuming and we reduce the human population. Those are racist Malthusian propaganda points that have nothing to do with Marxism. Marxism believes that if the banks, factories, and industries can be operated to serve public good and not profits, and if human reason and creativity, not the irrational pursuit of profits, can be placed in command of economic activity, the human race can go far beyond and begin producing a lot more and using resources in a much more rational way. It's only because of capitalism 
that the outdated, outmoded, irrational, inefficient mode of fossil fuel-based economy still exists. We need to get out of petroleum and natural gas as the basis for running our global economy. We need higher forms of energy, like perhaps fusion. Uh, we need to expand the space program. We need a more efficient way of raising people out of poverty and producing the energy needed for life, and that if we don't do it soon, there will be some ecological problems. But the issue at hand is not that human beings are consuming too much, it's rather that the economy is organized in an irrational way because it's owned by private capitalists who exploit workers to make profits and in their naked pursuit of profits, they're endangering the environment and threatening human progress. But watching this video forces me to ask some more questions about Mr. Thought Slime, his beliefs and his motivations. Take a look at this part. Me and a black dude might be equally exploited working at a Burger King together. Say you're working at Burger King. Your coworker comes to you because they know you're a big time left though, big time workers rights kind of person. And they're like, hey, I think I might be trans and I want to start to transition, but I'm really afraid that if I do, I'll lose my job. Hmm, Burger King. Now, I really doubt that Mr. Thought Slime has ever worked in fast food. However, I did work in fast food when I was a college student. One summer, during my college years, I actually worked at a sandwich shop that was fast food in the Cleveland area near the college I went to. And I'll tell you, that was a miserable job. I mean, they were constantly driving you faster to make those sandwiches and churn out those orders. Uh, it was very, very difficult to keep up the pace. And I'll tell you one thing. The last thing that I ever did when I was working, uh, assembling hamburgers and running the fryer at a fast food place, was to talk to my coworkers about their gender identity. Uh, we weren't sitting there and having group therapy and talking about discrimination or how we felt about our gender identities. We were being driven to work harder and harder and harder. Um, yeah, so uh, he seems a little bit out of touch when he's giving us a lecture about uh, transgender people at Burger King. But let's give the actual Marxist approach to the issue of anti-transgender bigotry that one might experience among one's co-workers at a fast food restaurant. The Marxist answer has always been solidarity. But there are many workers in the United States right now, not just at fast food restaurants, but at all kinds of places, call centers, coffee shops, the tech industry, automakers, who have been taken in by the far-right ideology. They have been told that their problems are caused by immigrants. Their problems are caused by black and brown people. Their problems are caused by the lack of a police state and the government being too soft on crime and not locking up enough people. A lot of working class people have been led to believe that the reason that the next generation of workers are stuck in a cycle of low-wage, short-term service sector jobs, like fast food, is because of some kind of liberal cultural Marxist conspiracy. Well, the job of the Marxist is to show the real reason why workers at Burger King are so underpaid and hard worked, why the United States is declining, why living standards are going down overall, and why there is such a rise in poverty and suffering in the Western countries. Their job is to show that this is because of the billionaire banker ruling class that dominates the global economy and is making super profits by grinding working people all over the world, not just in the United States, into greater poverty. And workers who've been taken in by anti-transgender bigotry or anti-immigrant bigotry or racism or whatnot need to understand that by lifting up those who've been the most oppressed by capitalism, whether they be black workers who suffer from police brutality and discrimination, whether they be gender non-conforming individuals, that by lifting up the most oppressed and joining arm in arm in solidarity, that they can become empowered. That by standing up and organizing resistance against the billionaire banker ruling class that controls the world, and fighting back, by fighting to establish a government of action that fights for the working class and would force the economy to serve the people and not simply operate in the interests of profits for private corporations, by doing that, all workers can advance. Working class people taken in by bigotry and hate need to understand that that bigotry and hate serves the billionaires and bankers and that solidarity 
is the way out. But you can't do that, according to Mr. Thought Slime. And it's a problem. You take a variety of factors and reduce it down to simply class. And sometimes you gotta do that. Sometimes it's a useful shorthand. But it may have the unintended, or in some cases, very much intended, side effect of erasing or making apologetics for someone else's oppression. See, according to this pseudo-leftist milieu, if you talk about working people, if you talk about class struggle, if you rant against the billionaires and bankers and monopolists that rule the world, you're a fascist. According to them, working class is a fascist buzzword. According to them, working families is somehow a discriminatory phrase. Any appeal to people on the basis of advancing their living conditions and building a better life, doing that is unacceptable in their world view. For them, socialism is not about working people casting off their bigoted ideas, standing arm in arm, fighting back against the billionaires and bosses, seizing control of the means of production, and reorganizing society so that growth is unlimited and all poverty can be eradicated. Oh no. For them, socialism is about the individuality of artists and middle-class intellectuals, and them standing up against the mob of inferior rabble who don't go to NYU to learn about these abstract gender theories that you must immediately agree with or else you're the equivalent of Adolf Hitler. I think the best way to understand the difference between this individual and myself is simply to look at the name that he gave himself, Thought Slime, and the image in the background of his video. Mr. Thought Slime has this image of slime, green gross slime, pouring out of a sewer behind him the whole time he is speaking. I don't find that appealing. I don't enjoy looking at gross, you know, mucus-like looking slime. And I'm not particularly interested in hearing what someone says if they name themselves after something that I don't particularly like looking at. But you see, I'm from the working class. I grew up in a small town full of people who worked in factories. Working people are trying to get rid of slime. They are trying to get rid of dirt. They don't like the fact that, you know, the infrastructure of the United States is falling apart, that our roads and bridges are in decay, that, uh, that our water is being contaminated with lead, that opioids and drugs are taking the lives of working people in big numbers, that there's hopelessness and despair among working people, uh, that so much poverty is taking place. They don't like that. Working people want to get to a better life. They want things to be nicer. They want things to be more hopeful more secure, more stable, and yes, more clean. But middle-class intellectuals have another view. They think that dirty things and abstract expressionist art is edgy and exciting. And that is the difference. Folks, there's a reason that the CIA, at the same time, it was covertly funding Trotskyites and anti-communist leftists with its Congress for Cultural Freedom program, also covertly funded the work of Jackson Pollock and tried to marginalize the school of art known as social realism. Because middle-class intellectuals and the elements in the U.S. government that funded them and support them deep down realize that the danger isn't from people exploring Marxism as an abstract idea. The danger to our society isn't from people debating the concept of gender and what it really means. The danger is solidarity. The danger is populism. The danger is working people coming together, putting aside racism, sexism, and all bigoted ideas and all forms of oppression, standing arm in arm and fighting back. And if you look all over the world, so many countries have broken free from capitalism. And when they've done it, they haven't tried to make their countries more slimy and gross. They haven't put up paintings of abstract art and Jackson Pollock. Instead, they have built some of the most beautiful cities, some of the most beautiful subway systems, the most beautiful gardens that you've ever seen. Working people are trying to get out of the slime. We're trying to get out of the cycle of destruction that capitalism has created. But... 
Mr. Thought Slime, he's from a different school of thought. He has an ideology that's about destruction. For him, being a leftist is about tearing things down. It's about accusing people of being racist, sexist, homophobic, and shaming them. It's about shaming people for having privilege. It's about destruction. It's about chaos in the streets. It's about creating instability in society. And it's about destabilizing countries that break out of Western capitalism and staging color revolutions in places like Libya and Syria and Eastern Europe to overthrow socialist governments because they're not in line with his enlightened Western ideological views. That's his view. But for the rest of us, socialism is about building a whole new world. It's about the people coming first and not profits. It's about humanity coming together. It's about reorganizing the economy to serve public good and not profits. It's about a whole new way of doing things where countries don't trade with each other at the expense of one another, but rather there's win-win cooperation where countries become wealthier by trading with each other and we no longer have a predatory system where big international bankers beat down developing countries. That's what socialism has really always been about. And in the countries that have built socialism, whether it be the Soviet Union, whether it be China, whether it be Cuba, Venezuela, the Baathist Arab socialist countries of the Middle East, uh, other countries around the world, that's what socialism has been about. It's been about making the world cleaner and nicer and more stable, bringing people together, eradicating the divisions that, that drive people against each other. That's what socialism is about. Real socialism is optimistic. But what Mr. Thought Slime is preaching, a pessimistic view that the world is all going to hell, that we're all using too many resources and need to be poorer, that working people are inferior rabble because they don't understand his ideology, uh, that every, every progressive fighter and leftist who may have a backward view on one question or other deserves to be beaten up and attacked violently, that worldview is a destructive worldview, and it's not a socialist worldview. And it's not surprising that some of the most powerful institutions in the United States have done a lot to promote such a destructive and pessimistic outlook.